Your name is John Coffey. Greetings, you are now listening to Coffee Talk and this is John Coffee. Here at Coffee Talk, we do this for the culture with new episodes every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can check us out online at www.coffee-talk.com. That is K-A-F-I-T-A-L-K.com. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at John underscore coffee underscore. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore coffee. Be sure to like that Facebook page at facebook.com slash coffee talk pod. You can subscribe to us on YouTube at Coffee Talk hosted by John Coffee, And we're also available on Spotify. Once again, that is K-A-F-I. Okay, first order business for this episode of Coffee Talk. I want to give a rest in peace shout out to Takeoff of the Migos. He died in a tragic and senseless act of violence not too long ago. I'm going to do something a little different this week. I'm going to freestyle something. Um, It's just something I've been thinking about. Um, It's about contrarianism, if that's even a word, about people being contrary. I think some to a certain degree, we we live in an era of anti-intellectualism. And um, I think that people think just because you're going against something that people accept as common knowledge that it somehow makes you a genius or intelligent and this occurs a lot with celebrities um it can it occurs a lot with regular people too but i think that because of celebrities celebrities doing it is what encourages uh everyone else because celebrities have so much sway and influence on the people so what i mean by contrarianism is anything basic uh common knowledge facts that we've all you know had with us since we were since we were a child um now don't get me wrong there are some historic things that have been you know people have been misled but i think pushing it to the level of basic average things in life there are some people that think if they go against what everyone else accepts as common knowledge i mean on a basic level i don't mean historical like i don't know the whole flat earth thing you know that's an example but there are mountains of evidence to the contrary of that but it's like somebody watches a couple youtube videos and and just pushing against what it what 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 is the accepted rule or or common knowledge uh they think that that makes them a genius or like some kind of rebel or a leader but you know now don't get me wrong you do have to push against the status quo to be a leader or a rebel but not everyone is meant to do that and you do have a cert- have to have a certain level of information and education in order to be qualified to speak on certain topics you know there's uh when you start a job you don't start off as the boss you start off at an entry level position you work your way up you gotta crawl before you ball some people say so a lot of people start off at the starting line and they already think they're a scholar. So I don't know, I've just been noticing that a lot online and it's uh, it's, it's kind of crazy the direction that we're taking. There have always been uh, groups of people or certain people that think that they're, they know more, they got it figured out more than everyone else. But just bear in mind that you have to, there's a certain level certain level of labor of study that comes along with that and it's not a youtube video you know there are a lot of details that got to be researched and information that has to be weighed against other information before you present you know your arguments um the way the internet is now is just a free-for-all of information and any person can make up anything and they're going to find a group of people that can fall in line and 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 believe in that depending on how charismatic that person is maybe not so much how much information they have well that's all i got for you this week just bear in mind when you when you run into these people you know it's not always about arguments because sometimes you can't win arguments with people that think they already got everything figured out so the best way i think to approach it would be if you want to start the debate just make sure you have information and facts to back it up and after somebody gets shut down a few times with 
you know, factual information. Sometimes they might back back down. Otherwise, you might just have to let it go and chalk it up as a loss. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can also respond in the comment section of the YouTube video. Okay, for this episode's edition of Coffee's Crates, we have some more music for you guys to check out. Uh, first on the list, got to represent for the Midwest. We got Busy Bone with I'm Busy. Uh, it's his new project. He drops a lot of music pretty often, and he is a very talented uh, spitter. He's got guest features from his sons, Little Busy and YBL Sinatra on that one. So be sure to check that out. Next up, we got Mr. Motherfucking Esquire. Uh, this is an artist you, you need to check out. He's got a unique approach to uh, to music, to hip hop. This album's called I Love You Cause You Ugly, Volume 1. And it features uh, some guests, Boots and Zara. I believe that's pronounced Zara. Last but not least, we have Elo Kush and Jalo Point. Jalo Point's a producer from Europe, and uh, Elo Kush actually got an interview with him coming up. The project is called The Adept. The production is by Jalo Point, of course, and the guest features are Jabaton from uh, Elo Kush's crew, Angels Inc., uh, Sur Supreme Cerebral from California, and Seishat Ali. So that's it for this edition. Be sure to stay tuned in to Coffee Talk and we'll keep bringing you uh, more music straight out of coffee's crates. I see the way they watch me, copy, probably plotting to try to two pop me in the lobby, beef and broccolis. Move through the streets with heat and bobby. Niggas got they fist ball trying to but not hot me. They watered down, but that type of shit get rewarded now. Then I'm supported by the guards you now. War's on, could reach Coney Island before dawn. For this episode of Coffee Talk, we have our special featured guest who is all the way from Baltimore, Maryland. He has collabed with a wide variety of artists, Sky Zoo, Ill Bill, Cool G Rap, and Griselda's Benny the Butcher. And uh, he's gonna talk to us today about his uh, career in hip hop. He's a member of the Umbrella Collective, and he's an overall ill lyricist. Give it up for J Royale. Peace, peace, peace. Yo, I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me and all that, man. Thanks a lot. Peace. No doubt, man. Uh, let's get into it at the beginning. I mean, uh, how, what got you into hip hop? How did you discover hip hop? What are some of the first songs you heard that that, that caught your attention and got you into the culture? Oh uh, man, um, hip hop, uh, hip hop was just the coolest thing in the world to me. It looked cool as a kid. You know what I'm saying? It was just, you know, it was it was the uh, it was the kind of controlled the climate of the streets. You know what I'm saying? And it's right. like, you know, I know I know it's cool to, you know, promote all of the street shit. But it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from an era where, you know, um, at, at one point in time, you know, we all know the streets was bad, bro. It was bad right. outside. You know what I'm saying? So um, the hip hop shit, the hip hop shit was uh, a safe haven, if you will, because um, it's, it's just like uh, the way the way I got into it, you know, um, Run DMC, it was a, it was a, uh, it was a holiday special with Run DMC. You know, they was the lunch cooking chicken and collard greens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That that you know the look of it. Um, I always yo know, for I was I was a Ninja Turtles fan, man. Even even Vanilla Ice's part in Turtles too. You know, I would <laughs> I would shut everybody up and and, and cut that up because you know that was, was my favorite. You know, my favorite part even on Turtles one. You know, at the end of it, you know, is the one joint, the T U R T L E power. <laughs> <Yeah. And it's, laughs> you remember that? Yeah, and yeah, I remember. Was, yeah, and yeah. It's right, right. But you know, on top of the, that, that hook, dude was getting some real fire shit <laughs> about the movie, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yo, this shit. You niggas rap too, you know? What I'm saying? So it's like, yo, but you know what I mean? I was like, I was a Turtles fan, and um. You know, uh, I, I'm an I'm a 80s baby, so, you know, it's nothing more hip-hop than than the 80s. Right, it's right. It's nothing more hip-hop, and I mean, in so many different aspects. So just being an 80s baby and growing up and seeing, you know, one of the best eras 
of hip hop unfolding in front of my eyes. It was like, you know, I, I you know, I am authentic hip hop. You know, just because I was born in '83, I'm telling my age, but you know that makes me hip hop. So it's like, yo, the more I delve into this shit, it's like the more I see that you know, like hip hop shows me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> it was just, you know, I'm a product of everything that came out. Definitely. That is hip hop from Ninja Turtles to the Saturday morning cartoon. Pro wrestling. To you know, pro wrestling, my nigga. Everything, all of all of the eras happened, you know, in front of our eyes, bro. Right. And um, you know, I got into it, just the style of it, and um, you know, seeing niggas hanging out in the streets and not only, you know, they they was thugging. And they was up to they nigga we shit, you know, selling their drugs and all that. But the outfits that they wore and the 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 way they talked and the smooth that came with them, the jewelry that they wore, and that was hip hop. So right. it's like these in all reality, you know, these niggas at one point in time was risking their lives to represent something. They needed the new joys. You right. know, they wanted the, the eight ball leather jackets, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's weird because it's like everything that's coming back out now that, you know, has has been a staple in hip hop. We saw that shit from the Koji sweaters to the to the snow beaches. We saw all that shit in its, in its originality. Yeah, we saw it, we saw it, we saw it raw and, and it's like, it wasn't supposed to happen that way. Like the low lives, that you know what I'm saying? That, right. that, that it wasn't supposed to be meant for niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, yo, we took something and created something. So it's just like, yo, I always admired that. And it was just, you know, the style, the, the way the talk and all that, from how you bop and all that. And I knew I had to be involved because it's like, you know, to get girls, um, to, to, to explain myself to my man. I couldn't just tell you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, oh shit, you should have saw the fight the other day. I had to say it like, son, my nigga got teed off. Next thing you know, they scrapping. <laughs> All types of shit broke out. It's like, oh shit, yeah. you know what I mean? The slang, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Everything, everything was a part of it. So it's just like, yo, um, Slang is so important to his like yo, we ain't get into all that. But no, no, I got into it at a very young age and I held on to it tight, bro. I right. held on to it tight. And you know, um my mom used to walk into my room and I you I would take the uh, the vibe page, the verge people, the, the people on the verge. Uh, next you mean, the blows. Yeah, like the, in, the, um, in the source when they had uh, yeah, the quote the, of the month, the, the quote of hip hop yeah, quotable. Hip hop quotable. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pasting these things to my wall. You know, I still got my Inspector Duck one when, when he did Triumph. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and Cool G Rap when he, when he did the, um, the, the Mob Deep joint. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, you walked into my room and 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 it was it was just hip hop. All I needed was my radio. I you know I had my pictures, my little graffiti, my lyrics, and all that. And it was just like yo, that this was the world that I I lived in. And um, you know, as a kid, it was really really my safe haven, bro. Because it was like um a lot of a lot of cats would you know they would try to brush up on their their skills with this or their skills with that. And it was just like, I, right. I knew that certain group of niggas at school that was into rhyming. So I had to prepare myself to be a part of that. And not only that, to, to, to shine. So the freestyling no were happening and the ciphers were happening and the, you know, oh shit, yo, the witty lines and then hearing Wu-Tang Clan and you know, my cousin Malcolm, he was a DJ, and I was just a Wu Tang fanatic, and this nigga pulled me up. He said, Yo, so what you think? Wu Tang is the only rap crew out there? Huh. And I'm like, Damn. Yo, you know what? Like, yo, I'm thinking to myself, like, this nigga is right. 
And then he like, yo, what about the boot camp? You don't play none of that shit. <laughs> yo, what about the, you know what I'm saying? What about the, and he was like, yo, he's right. Right. And not only, you know, not only is there the Spider-Man comic, but there's the X-Men. Right. And then there's the Punisher. Right. Oh, shit, I'm on to something. <laughs> so it's like, yo, if you want to be into this shit, you got to be into this shit. And right. I was just like, yo, this nigga's right, man. This nigga's right because... You know, comic books was the flip side of it. Like, before the Marvel movies and all that, we had Marvel masterpieces. My yeah. nigga, no you doubt, know what I'm no saying? We had, we had the comic books. We had to know, we had to know the, not only did we have to know the, the, the you know, the character, we had to know their, their full names. We had to know their story. Their powers and their weaknesses. You know? They had uh, their powers and their weaknesses because it all connected. Right. And it's like, oh God, you you know, you like him. It's like, yo, you, we see we see how Punisher started this shit. Yo, X Men baby stuff, home dog. They caused most of the right. that shit. <laughs> right, right. Punisher the real dope. And it's like, yo, these was real conversation. Right, right. That was going on. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. yo, why you like him? And it's like, hey, yo, you know he Magneto's son. Oh shit, I didn't know that about Cyclops. <laughs> You know, like I didn't know that. I didn't know that Magneto and, and, and Professor X were really friends, bro. Like they was really friends. They just had a different perspective on hip hop. Right. You know right, what I'm right. saying? And it's like, yo, it's all unfolding. So yeah, man. It was like Malcolm and Martin, huh? It was like Malcolm and Martin. <laughs> on God. And it was like, you know, they, they both had they both had their their realistic point of views. And they both could stand on it, right? You know, and then the and then the and then the bigger scheme of things, you know, you had people that followed that, you know, that that yo, we the mutants, we got superpowers, and they just don't fuck with us, right? Exactly. And then you had the peaceful ones, like no, yo, we could get there if we, you know, if we we learn how to hide it and blend in, and it's sort of like the race so to speak no like doubt. you know what i'm saying like yo nah bro we're niggas and we're always going to be treated like niggas and then you had some mutants that was just like no 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 maybe <laughs> if we talk like them and maybe if we fell in line then we could get ahead and represent for the culture but you know what i'm saying at least we had something with that type of content that could take us away from the harsh reality right. that was really going on. It was this world, you know what I'm saying, of, of fantasy that was just so dope of cosmic powers. And that was my hip hop because, you know, even even with everything that's going on and, you know, these people being real people to me, they were the superheroes and, you know, their lyrics were their powers. And they were they were fighting that fight, right? Yo, we're lyricists, and in a in a market that only wants the funny style shit, right? You know, so it's like everything. You know, it, 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 it all comes back full circle, bro. It's a beautiful thing because you know it trained our minds as kids to think different, way different, and to embrace, you know being looked at and, 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 and saying, hey, I'm, I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd right, and right. I embrace that. And you know, some, some cats just embrace the fact like, look, I'm a thug. Or, look, I'm out here. I'm really fucked up in life. And you know, fuck authority and fuck all that. And it was just like, yo, for every, for every mentality that there was, you know, there was a, a hip hop song that represented that. There was a soundtrack to that. Right, right. As far as uh, these superheroes that people like you and I looked up to, which which one of these of this cast of characters in the history of hip hop inspired you to pick up the pen? Ah oh, man, um, Ghostface Killer, Big Punisher, Half a Mill, Big Al. Um, I could go on for days. Um, Raz Kaz. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? When he when he when he did the primo joint, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Yo, it, 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 the list goes on. And any fresh hip hop that I would get, um, we went to the store, me and my homeboy, and um, 
I, I, I stole the big L four five six. I'm lying to you. I, I, I stole the I stole the Cool G Rat four five six, and he stole the big L life life of the um life of the poor lifestyle of the poor is dangerous, right? Yeah. My man Drew. So G Rap shit was mine. The big L shit was his. Right. And the G Rap shit was amazing. No doubt, yeah. But when I heard the the metaphors, Big L was kicking. I say yo, I say yo, we got swap. Yo, let me hold that, you hold mine. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like G Rap was the vivid storyteller. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but Big L was the punchline. Oh shit, yo, really niggas with so much slang. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm like, yo, let me let me hold the you know the Big L shit. You hold my shit. He said, holding more keys than a janitor. Uh, more keys than a janitor, so. Yo, Big L was saying some crazy shit. And at my age, I'm like, yo, I got it. If I'm going to do this, I got to say shit, you know, like that. <laughs> you know what I'm I got to be on that type of speed. And you know what I'm saying? I was right. like, yo, hey, yo, you hold my, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, go ahead, hold the boat. I ain't on God, yo, I still owe him because he never got neither one of them shit. <laughs> right. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would beatbox, I would beatbox, and he would be the freestyler. And right. now, it's like, yo, he calls me to this day. And it's just like, yo, I can't believe, like, how far you took this shit, because it's like, oh, it's, you know, you the rama. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, it's just crazy. You used to be the human beatbox back in the day? Oh, man, yeah. So it's just, we used to sit on the stoop, me and my man Drew, and he'd be like, yo, let's let's get it. And I'd be like, yo, come on, yo. And I... <laughs> And I just started going with him for him. And That's I kicked up. the beat and he just go, my nigga. But but it's crazy because we would smoke weed. So he would kick these long fucking freestyles and I'm beatboxing for like five minutes. My mouth all dried out the count about this shit. Right. And this nigga just still rhyming. And I'm like, nigga, when you gonna let me rhyme? Yo, I'm so yeah, that was that was out there. I was out there and then um and then I started, like I say, I started on um, Friday nights. It was this get together. Um, it's like, yo, Baltimore Street is a strip in Baltimore, you know? And um, it's like, on Friday nights, the um, the job call buses would let niggas off at, at the arena. You had the, the strip clubs and everything was shut down at two. But then it would be like from two o'clock a.m to like 6 a.m. It was just like a big strip full of niggas like that was parking lot pimping bitches was out, you know what I'm saying? It was, right. It was the place to be on, on, you know, Friday, Saturday night. Right. So it'd be nice big ciphers would jump off and it was just like, you know, all hoods from Baltimore, from Charlie Hill, you know, down the hill, you know what I'm saying? County right. niggas was even down there. And it's just like, you know, you would wear your, your flyer shit. That's where you would come to either try and book a bitch or, you know, get your little drink on and just hit the streets. But a lot of ciphers would happen. So, you know, seeing that shit early, 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 it's like, you know, at first, being so young, I would, I, you know, high school ciphers was different. These niggas was in school. Right. <laughs> but then, these Baltimore street ciphers, like niggas really had it on them. You know, niggas, right. you know, niggas was outside on some shit like, yo, you say the wrong shit. And it could be your ass, little nigga. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, that was a whole different level of shit talking. Cause it's like, you know, it wasn't, you, you couldn't you couldn't just go down there and jump down somebody's throat, crack and slip with him, cause you know they fuck you up, man. And it was like Risky yo, business. Baltimore. Yeah, you know. So it's like yo, the fuck. It's either you gonna jump out there, and you even gonna be nice, my nigga. You, it's like all right, shorty, man. Keep keep it pushing, and don't let us have to tell you. Like, don't make me have to repeat myself, type shit. Right. You know. So it's like. You had to figure out a way, and I, and I figured out a way, because, you know, being down there every weekend, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I knew who, I knew what hands to shake, and I knew who got the respect. 
So it's like, you know, nah, nah, look, it's like I say, they, they used to, I was a little fat boy, J Rock. So the, yeah. the one nigga called me Fast. He's like, no, oh, Fast, go ahead and do your thing, yo, talk your shit. And when he told me to do it, he was one of them niggas. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, once some shit like, all right, shorty, come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? If, if you know what I'm saying, if, if, if that nigga say do it, we gonna respect. <laughs> we gonna respect you on the straight for him. No doubt. You know what I mean? But started doing it and just, I really was getting nice at it. You know what I'm saying? Because that was that was what you had to do in order to be heard. So you mentioned earlier that you would uh, be on the stoop with your with your man's when you was doing the beatboxing thing. Now, yeah, yeah, with you. That kind of caught my ear because I think this, correct me if I'm wrong, but your first official release was called The Ivory Stoop. Correct, yes, yes. Oh, okay, now, the Ivory Stoop. now does that relate to a, a, a cultural thing in Baltimore? Yes, it does, it does. Could it you does. explain that to us? All right, so um, The Ivory Stoop, you know what I'm saying? Um, Baltimore is known for its, its historical, historical marble stoops. You know what I'm saying? So um, marble, you know, um, I wanted to make it sound hip hop. So, you know, Marble Stoop wasn't, wasn't doing it for me. Right. So, you know, the, the, the color of marble, if I had to explain it, was ivory. Marble and ivory was the same color to me. So the ivory stoop, it's like, that's that, it rung a bell. So the thing about the ivory, the, the thing about the marble stoop, too, you know, in certain parts of Baltimore, Every Sunday, they would come out and scrub these marble stoops, you know, to uphold the, you know, the property value around, you know, those areas. Right. But later in, later in life, you know, these parts of Baltimore would be, you know, considered the, the ghetto. Right. You know, so these, these stoops went from getting washed every Sunday, and then they turned into dilapidated stoops where they would be hangouts and traps and where motherfuckers would post up to sell their shit. Right. So I looked at that and I said, well, yo, that's exactly what's going on in hip hop. You know? Um, right. At one point in time, you know, hip hop had substance. Uh, it, you know, it was clean. It had a message. You know what I'm saying? Um, fight the power and, you know, uh, uh, you know all glocks down and, you know, so on and so forth. Right. And then down the line, you know what I'm saying, it turned into this dilapidated, yo, I'm not a rapper, I'm a, I'm a hustler, you know, I, I don't rap, I, you know, I sell drugs, like rap, rap is just getting me my money type thing, it was that type of feel, so I was just like, yo, that's this, it's the same thing as the stoop in Baltimore. Right. I'm from Baltimore, you know what I'm saying, so it's like, I, I knew if I was to jump out there, it had to be something that represented us. You Definitely. know, no matter who I had on it, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I, I made the stoop the epicenter of this movie. That's and, dope, you that's know, dope. Yeah, man, and it was, you know, um, from, it, 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 it's, it's a story of a kid who is on this stoop, but he sees everything that's going on in the streets, and he, and he takes... You know, he takes a chance and he wants to be a part of what he sees as far as fast money and, you know, the the, the drugs and all that because school is in it. Right. So, um, it's a very vivid story and um, a lot of people call it the soundtrack, the real soundtrack of the wire. Like, I dropped it, I put the energy in the air and it's like, I don't, there's no self-proclaimed anything when it comes to me. I really, any views, or you know any you know anything that comes with it and people embrace it i just take it i repost it and i'm thankful but um a lot of people have deemed it as a, a classic and then i took it from that and um we segued into the second joint which is called the baltimore housing project well that first joint that first joint definitely definitely uh deserves to be called a classic you had a variety of uh producers and guest features on there as well uh you had benny the butcher and uh conway the machine from griselda on there and this was back this was back before they kind of really really blew up i think right it was it was right before it was right before they um they took off yeah it was right before everything took off and um yeah man that was uh 
Well, that, that was that was a that was a very very special time um, in my eyes because I, it was just like we saw it before it happened, bro, and it was just like we knew we knew what was about to happen, and it was like I, I was I was yelling at the top of my lungs, like, bro, y'all don't understand, like this this real hip hop shit is about to really. It's about to really punch y'all in the fucking face. Y'all better embrace it. Yeah. And, you know, this is when people were still like, oh, you need a hit. You need a jingle. You need it. And I'm like, bro, you really don't get it. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, I, um, I've had phone calls, like, shaking hands and pulling up and then talking to those guys and, you know, showcasing what I could do and right. really, you know, creating that move. And it, it 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 stuck and stuck and people and, and it, it was impactful and it was like okay wow like this kid knows what he's doing. So how did you connect? How did you connect with Griselda? Um, supporting them. <laughs> oh yeah. Supporting them. I was supporting them uh, at a live show. It, you know, me and me and my producer Ray Sosa. You know, uh, it's like we were supporting them and um. We went to uh, a live show, and this is when we first met Benny. You know, um, in fact, uh, he had had the Conway connect and gave Conway a call from a pop-up shop. He gave Conway a call, and um, we worked everything out. We sent him everything, and he, he was like, y'all love it. I was like, I love this shit. And we actually, it's crazy because we sent him like three joints, and he loved all three, but Walk With A Gun was, you know, walk with a gun just stood out. And right. he was just like, Yeah, I love this, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he laced that. So, um, he did right. Everybody did right. And then uh they was on tour opening for the last. Yeah. And um Benny, you know, Benny at because at first it was West Side Gun pushing Conway. Yeah. Benny was hidden. He was like the hidden character. Right. You know what I'm saying? What was the verse? He was like, that night I had a dream like Martin Luther. And I was like, like oh shit, who the fuck? Yeah. Like, off, yeah he, was, of, he was just sprinkled around on joints. Off of Fly God, knew. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So nobody knew exactly who he was. So we was in the crowd and like Baltimore in a hole, bro. I can't, I, and I, bro, I take this to the grave, nigga. It was probably six people in the crowd who knew them niggas. Huh. And like word for word, we knew the lyrics, all that shit. Uh, <laughs> everybody else was like, "Yo, who is these niggas? What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. They was really, they was really ugly because they didn't know. Really, they didn't know. I, man, that, yo, I was on guard. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even that big on on that. But I thought you, I thought you meant who are they like in a good way? <laughs> nah, nah, niggas, just, you know what I'm saying? Niggas. Just like yo, who is these niggas? You know what I'm saying? West Side Gun has a, you know, he was talking his shit like yo. Oh yeah. It's my first time in Baltimore. <laughs> nigga, I was ready to put a bundle. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. But yo, we was feeling them. Yeah. And a lot of niggas wasn't. You know what I mean? It was like yo, who the fuck is this nigga? Right. And um, and and, and yo, push the fast forward button, everybody. And it was like, oh wow, but. After that show, you know, they wasn't even on a week and greet shit. Them niggas would do they set, then they had shoot through the back, and they would sell eight merch. Right. So we shaking hands, so Benny, you know what I'm saying? I approach Benny, and he like, yo, what size, bro? And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I was like, yo, I'm gonna I'm a buy a shirt. But my nigga, I, I wanna work. And he was like, oh, it was? Like, like I was the first nigga, you know, in that in that merch line to say something different to him like that. He's right. like, oh word. <laughs> like, okay, well you, you think you charm enough, that type of thing. Right. So the nigga like, yo, take my number. He was like, yo, I'ma be in town for a few days. Take my number. You know what I'm saying? And the rest is history, bro. And then um, you know, he solidified the music. He killed shit, of course. And then, you know, it, it, you know, it ain't official until you seen it. I can tell you about the bins all day when the TC drives slow right. down Baltimore Street in that motherfucker. Really, you, I really don't have it. I'm just right, it. right. So niggas like, nah, yo, we need to make this shit a movie. So reminds me, my brother, he lives in Harlem. 
So, you know, he was like, yeah, I got a pop-up shop, da 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 Fast forward, we at the pop-up shop, and then, you know, we, we shot we shot the movie, and, you know, my name DJ Shay. Oh, man. R.I.P. Yeah, man. It was, and, and, and it's crazy, because off of what we did and just doing good business, like, I didn't know what I was involved in all the way until you know like it started to get put together and it was just like wow we completed it you know what i'm saying right. it's like we got the joint and the, and the song sounds so fucking fire that when that we didn't even take time to process how monumental shit was walk with a gun or the iron or the whole album Man, I'm talking about we got two infinity stones on our hands right now. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got verses for both these niggas. Right, and, right, you know, right. The traction is being made and they sounding good. Um, and now Benny's like, nah, they got fuck with. You know what I'm saying? It's like the nigga was like he called me out the blue and like you know, we was was on the phone for like two and a half hours and he just like would break break down. He, he broke down the whole story of what it was, how it came about, and I didn't connect DJ Shay into the mix, and I didn't know that he was the staple that he was, bro. Right. And he, you know, upon, you know, doing all this, making all these moves, he's like, bro, I love what you're doing. I love the fact that you reached out, and I love what's going on right now because it makes sense. Your sound is what we're pushing. Right, right. You know, so after everything was said and done, you know, I kept up with Benny. We promoted everything, but you know, um, I didn't keep up with DJ Shay like that. And you know, he came to his untimely demise. And I'm thankful that we got picks. I, I heard his wisdom. Yeah. And uh, I got to build with him before the transition because, um, you know, it's like he he's the he's the backbone and all that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people see the West Side Gun, they see the glitz and the, you know, what what it's turned into. But I'm glad we caught that in its authentic stage, if you will, like when niggas was still making rounds and putting together the blueprint of how to make rounds in the hip hop right and what type of nigga you really gotta be to really do it from this perspective and move from you know from Baltimore to Jersey to Philly and you know it's about doing the business it's about it's about you know showing up and 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 understanding the assignment not hard bags in it completing the assignment and staying busy no doubt you know what I'm saying? And it's like that. You know, a lot of Jews, a lot of Jews came from, you know, talking to their squad. And it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a real nigga. So it's like, I ain't about to, you know, I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to drop any of this music on some shit. Like, I'm riding the coattails or, you know, I'm trying to portray the show. Like, this is the same hip hop that we have always done and stood on top of. So to see some niggas come out of, you know, I felt like when that Griselda shit was going on, still is going on, salute to them. Um, it was synonymous to what Baltimore was going on because our, our boom back scene was so slim to none. And yeah. so few people understood it. And here you got like, you know, Baltimore um, being next to Philly, Jersey, DC. And we looked at it and it's like, yo, who 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 has made it? And right. then you got Buffalo standing next to New York. And it's like, who who from Buffalo has done anything? So it's like I felt this though it was synonymous. And that's that was that created the whole reach out. And that's how I explained it to them. And they was yeah. like, nah, yo, you're exactly right. Because they don't take niggas serious unless you're standing next to that nigga. Huh. That nigga would be New York. And for us to be New York, you know what I'm saying? So it's right. like, yo, Baltimore, what y'all done? Buffalo, what y'all done? I like to call it geographical prejudice. Yeah, man, it is. <laughs> it is. 
And just like your man, just like your man, like it was a certain name he had brought up. And you know, he's like, yeah, well, who? And then it's like, yo, you bring up a name and it's like, well, I don't know him. And it's like, my nigga, well, that's your fault. Exactly. Just because you don't know about it doesn't mean it's not happening. <laughs> that, that it's not happening. And then it's like when they figure out that it's happening. Then they want to be down with it. They, yeah, even they want to be down with it or they or they got some, some sort of slander about it. Like my man, yeah, my man doing the same shit. Why y'all ain't looking at him like that? And it's like, yeah, it be that type of it right. be that type of style of Steve, you know what I'm saying? I still get that to this day, bro. It's like, you know, I, I come from a city just like any other city. Because it's like, I ain't about to say it now, it's all my city. But the niggas in it, you know, they different. It's like, yo, the fuck? You cool with me. Jay Royale, you cool with me. I done seen you on your, your lows. I done seen you with your highs. And there's no way in the world that it's you. It just can't be you. It's like yeah. if you book a bad bitch. No, oh, yo. Yeah, man, you see... You, How you do that? You see, this, <laughs> yeah, you see me on a date with this bad bitch. You got to try to show me up. If he like him, if she like him, she got to like a nigga like me. And it's like, no, nah, bro, it, it ain't that type of party. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I, I ain't go about it how you would go. That's a that's an unhealthy perspective. <laughs> it is, man, but it's the whole fucking truth. Yeah. There's still niggas that, they, there's still niggas that love me in the inboxes. There's still niggas that love me on the street corner. There's still niggas that love me when I'm out here running around and just being my regular nigga shit. Yeah. But it's just like, you know what I'm saying? On that aspect, you know, it, it, they want to know more. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's weird, bro. It's yeah. like, it's more shit that they want to know than they want to show me love for. Like, how you do that? Who did your art? Who did this? Who did that? Where you go after this? Where you go? And it's like, damn, bro, why don't you... Yo, some of the things you say in my inbox, man, it's a, you know, post that shit, I guess. I don't know. I, I really, because I'm not the nigga that acts. I don't ask for that stuff. I'm, I'm almost it's I'm like, 39 years old. It's bro, like they so. say on the chip commercials, get your own bag. There you go, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, yo, yeah, yo. We different, bro. It's different. All of this shit is different, son. You mentioned your producer, Ray Sosa, earlier. Now I noticed on that first album he did like he was the producer that did the most beats from one producer. He did like four or five tracks. Yeah. How long have you been connected to him and how did you how did you originally meet him? Oh man, so um it was an artist, it was an artist that we was both connected to and um, you know, uh Sos could never get in contact with this artist, you know what I'm saying? He was one of them egotistical dickheads. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, he kept calling this artist and then he had called me one one day. I was like, Jay, I, I heard you on a couple of tracks, and you know what I'm saying? Um, like, yo, I be I be putting together these beats, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yo, bro, it's no, it's no doubt, you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, send me a pack. And I swear, damn God, like, the way I feel about my music, getting into somebody's ears, yeah. is the same way you feel about his beats getting into somebody's ears. Right. So we sat, the music sound like his, his beat sounded amazing. And I was like, yo, we can really do something with this. And you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy because uh, I was like, yo, you know, he was like, yo, I, I, I wrote a verse to this shit. He was like, yo, we you here on that shit? I was like, I hit Conway. He was like, oh, man, there's no way we can get Joe. And I said, yo, yeah, let's try. Right. Yeah, let's try, bro. And, you know, we, um, <laughs> yo, so, uh, have you ever seen the Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, I'm familiar. We took the Wolf of Wall Street approach. <laughs> so it's just me, it's just me and my man, so we wrote up a script, and basically we acted like we were a label, bro. I got him, I said, all right, bro, you, you know, send me emails and say I'm your artist. And the way Sos looks and the way he talks, it's like, okay. <laughs> he, play, he played the role I, or he, I, he... Yeah, I'd send him in, I'd send him in. And he, you know, we always got the job done. And you right. know, when, um, this is how we created a, uh, uh, 
our resume, if you will. Right. Okay. You know, this is what we've done. So we took the videos that we've done and we, we, we kind of created our own makeshift EPK. You know, and then right. we started selling it. We started selling it and we started jazzing up these emails. You know what I'm saying? And right. I'm, I'm like, yo, say you the head of PR. Say you the head. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the staff yo, of two. Yo, I swear to God, bro. And um, I mean, my nigga, if, 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 whatever, whatever success story you look at, started from a hunt somewhere in Nebraska or well, you know right started from a fucking idea and uh, we sat down and we just put together we just put together the right scripts and the right blueprint to um to introduce ourselves because we didn't want to be you know what everybody else was doing where's your man from Ray Sosa he's from Baltimore as well but he, he's from he's from Maryland so he's from a little like he's from a little ways out you know what I'm saying but um you know, he was out. He lives he right around the corner from me now. Like, oh, I'm, I see. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm on my way to his house after this interview so we can get um, some verses done. We've done a lot. You know, we purchased our own fucking studio equipment. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the part that he plays on every album of mine, he still, he still, you know, this third album that we're about to drop, this third installment to what it is we do. It's like he. Same way so soon. Do you have a title for it? I do. I do. IG Rap shit was kind of like the first single off of it. You know what I'm saying? So um, we pushing that. And um, yo, I, I can guarantee the streets will. Uh, um, because I, I don't like it. I don't even like to talk like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I hope. I hope. I hope they take to it because uh, we take pride in um, you know, uh, just 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 the thing of what we put together and um you know just just the, everything the whole rollout takes a lot of thought and on um, this this actual this album we just sat and um we just sat and created it out of our own pocket and we figured since it was our last you know installment to this kind of like series if you will right um we we had to we had to jazz it up a little bit and we had to you know make it everything that you know everybody you know, would expect. You know what I'm saying? And um even even uh even even the uh, even the secrets about it has just been like, yo, so when is this shit dropping? So what do you wanna do? And uh we took advantage of the COVID where nobody was making money. Right. And you know, we broke bread with a lot of artists that don't do features for anybody. And we got them on and not only did we get them, but you know, we made sure um they well we're thankful that they put their best foot forward right. so it's like yeah we about to take niggas back to 96 bro you have a common guest feature that appears on a lot of songs with you uh his name's ill conscious he's also from from your neck of the woods correct yeah 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 how long have you known him and uh how did you guys connect on on the rap shit uh well ill conscious um is crazy because uh the, um i have a mentor and um my mentor's name is Ogun, and he runs a studio. So it was one night, and um, he was like, "Yo, he was like, yo, I think, I think you're worthy to be in this crowd tonight." And actually, it was like a contest of, um, you know, um, you know, whoever they deemed Baltimore's best, you know. And um, this is way before I knew any of these, you know, things was like rigged and all that shit. Yeah. So it was a lot of, um, he was like, bro, and this is my mentor talking, he was like, bro, this is your competition, I want you to know that, you know what I'm saying? These artists that you're about to see tonight, this is what you're up against. And um, it was a very dope show, and actually, Ill Conscious won. Yeah. Yeah, so Ill Conscious won the whole battle. And, you know, I showed him love, you know what I'm saying? Yo, salute, I'm J-Boy Yale. And he knew who I was. I, you know, I was familiar with who he was, but I wasn't familiar of his catalog. So, um, it was super duper nice. Right. Um, we we started connecting, and um, I brought him. I um, I asked him to be on a joint of mine, and uh, it was a joint called A One. And he returned the favor, you know, and he was like, "Yo, I want you on this joint of mine." Right. And we just started vibing in verses with each other. 
And then we built a, a, a dope rapport with each other. And then people started calling us, you know, like Baltimore, Raekwon, and Ghostface. Right, right. And, and um, you know, the music that me and that young man put together is uncanny, bro. It's just... Oh, yeah, it's definitely dope. You can tell you guys got chemistry. It's undeniable. And, um, you know, all I would... You know, all I would have to do was either hear, I, I would hear, I, I would have to hear his verse prior, and I knew exactly, you know, the vision that he had, just because I knew the type of hip hop he was after, you know what I'm saying? And, right. And, you know, he knew, like, he, you know, it was just, yo, we sat down at the chessboard and just knew how to move the pieces together. It was just a never ending chessboard, chess game. Right. Nobody ever put each other in check. You know, and we it was just always a stalemate because it was just like we everything we did to create the barbershop talk. So, um, you know, from there, uh he was connected to Dirk Platoon, who was connected to Guy Grange, and um they were doing shows. So based off of this track that we did for his album, you know, I would I would get I would I would rock with him yo come on yo we, we doing a show in jersey come on rock that joint right yo we here in philly yo come on and rock that joint so doing that joint turned into i right, yo so i played with this hook you know and then we would do we would increase our stage presence and um it was it was kind of like hype man type shit once right. shit like not only would i kick the verse but I'm here, I'm, I'm, you know, the whole time you're on stage, I got you, bro. Right, you know, right, I, right, I know, yeah. I know my role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, a lot of dope shit came out of it. And, um, yeah, man, salute that guy, bro. That was a, that was a uncanny, that was an uncanny, uh, uncanny chapter of, uh, of the, of my book, of my novel, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was that he definitely played a substantial role. That's and, um, up. And then the burst of J-Royale, if you will. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a little bit. I got to touch on this. It's what most people in the world have connected to your city uh, is The Wire. Now, could you tell us a little bit about what kind of responses you get from people that aren't from Baltimore regarding that film? Do people ask you a lot about it? How close to life is that actual, I mean, series? I'm sorry. How close is that to actual Baltimore life? And what did you think about it when it when it actually came out? I'm, um, I'm I'm still a huge fan of the wire, but um, it's 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 kind of crazy because it's like um, the wire was kind of just like the most uh popular show of the series because before the wire you had the corner, um, and the corner had a book, you know, and um, it, it was a lot of it, it was a lot of um, it was a lot of HBO series, you know, that depicted um the. Baltimore's uh, beauties and uglies, if you will. Right. You know, and um, the Wire, um, it was it was it was very authentic. But there are there are you know concerns of the Baltimorean because um, you know Snoop was the only one who was an authentic you know Baltimorean. Yeah. And my album, the album ends with Snoop getting killed. Cause right. I felt like, I felt like in the wire when Snoop got killed, so, they killed Baltimore. So what my interpretation is of what you're saying is they should have employed more locals in the filming of that, of that, that project. Oh yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. They were saying, they were butchering our street names. Um, you know, just, 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 uh, Baltimore is a planet of its own. So, you know what I'm saying? When, um, you know, when you tap into the mentality of a Baltimorean, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, as a city, we would watch it and we were tuned in because it was about our city. Right. But we would laugh at certain things or you know, some shit like, yo, why they do that? It's like, uh, <laughs> right, right. It's like the Meat Mill dirt bike joint. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yo, who's this kid? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why? And, um, you know, I love the wire. I love the content of it. You know, I love, I love, um, I love the city being exposed for just, you know, it, it it went deeper than just, you know, the cops and the robbers thing that was going on in the streets. They right. they really they really tapped into the root of the problem, uh, you know, uh, politics, education, 
you know what I'm saying? And um, the, in, the, the industrial part of it and how drugs play a part and, you know what I'm saying, all of this and how, you know, how corrupt politicians can be. Right. The monies and where it's going exposed a lot of things that, you know, the average show wouldn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of it. And you know, just like anything else, you know, I, you know, you got your you got your pros and your cons, but um, yeah, man, they they definitely uh, they shine light on Little Melvin and um, what he did with uh, his communication skills with you know, pages, pay phones, and um, and that type of content, right? And um, yeah, man, it, it, it's uh, Charles S. Dutton. The wire wouldn't be shit without Charles S. Dutton. Right. Rock? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> rock. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so the, the wire just, I guess, had had uh, the money to do what Charles S. Dutton could not do. Because right. from, from, the, from the television show, Rock, to the corner, to everything that all of, all of the things that y'all I have a song on my second album called Charles that Dutton. Oh yeah. And it's yeah, giving him yeah. and it's giving him his flowers just because, you know, he was the spokesman for Baltimore. The real Baltimore. And it was like in Hollywood, he, he was he managed to, you know, find his way into Hollywood and still try to give back to, you know, Baltimore's ghettos and he, you know, he did he did that bid. He overcame that uh, bid and uh, and went on to be great. Yes, yeah, and you know what I'm saying. He, he really shined light on, you know, um, our role and where we were in the war on drugs and how drugs was winning this war on drugs in Baltimore. And you know, he he put he put he put living rooms into Baltimore way before uh, Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> standing right. on North Avenue after the Freddie Gray situation. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta shout, you gotta shout out him, you know. And um, yeah, man, if it's a part of my city, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always in tune, and I'm a huge fan of the Wire. Um, well put together, well written series. Um, I have, I have all of them in my, in my. Um, I even have the, um, the corner book about DeAndre and Miss Fran. Rest in peace to all of them. Yeah. And, uh, Steve, you know, um, I pay I pay close attention to that stuff because, you know, you you never going to get where you're going until you know where you're from. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? And because questions like this will arrive, and you know, you got to know you got to know your shit. You know what I'm saying? So one surprising thing about you being in tune with your city is when I brought up the name before the interview, I brought up the name Lab Tech One, and you instantly knew who I was talking about, which kind of surprised me, really, to be honest. <laughs> Oh wow, no nah, man. Oh, uh, and I, I can I can take I can take your lab tech one, and I can raise you a few, man. You got Greenspan, you got Greenspan, you got up, uh, you got Boss Man the God, you got Scar I'm bro. Mm -hmm. You know, um, all of these guys, uh, these guys had the city on their back. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then and they're still huge entities. You know, um, in Baltimore hip hop. But the reason why I'm a fan of them. Is because you know, um, outside of whatever hit that they created, you know, these guys have catalogs of work that resonate, you right. know, through the streets still. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And even um, you know, even little, even even little Scooter, who came to his un the untimely demise, even though he didn't do the hip hop or you know the same music as I do, um, he definitely played a huge role in our city and right. um and you know like moose you know because we had the um we had that last the corrupt baltimore city cop and he is a rapper that was actually harassed by these the gun force the the, the, the gun the, the, the niggas the dirty niggas right and they, they gave him they gave him problems and you know he made it out of that so it's like it's deeper than hip hop, and a lot of people think just because it's like, all right, well, they do that type of hip hop, so I can't fuck with them. No, man, I want somebody from my city to go, to go. I want them to get over that hump, right? To where it's though, you know, 
like what Queensbridge was at the time. It's like, oh, all right, damn, Queens. Everybody in Queens got got a fucking record deal just because right. they was from Queens at one point. Now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I know, I know record deals aren't the main aim anymore, but, the, you know, being being recognized and, and being you know looked at is definitely something that I, I need for my city even if it's not even if it's not me bro even if it's not me i just want my city i want my city to be recognized for you know what it is because it's not a rapper it's not a rapper rapping that doesn't have a i came to baltimore and, and pack some work and you know what i'm saying right. it's not a rapper that's doing this shit that, that don't bring up was hurting them in the home of the Tarkins, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's right. come to Baltimore and made their rounds, even though uh, uh, the Herb Gotti shit. Right, a right. Lot of that, a lot of that brings you to Baltimore, you know what I'm saying? These niggas be around. No doubt, so, no doubt. Yeah, man, but it's like, uh, you know, I want, I want somebody else to get recognition outside of the drug trade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the niggas come down here and they get their weight. They come down here and they, you know, they get their numbers and then that's it. But they in the game and it's just like, bro, you can scout some talent, bro. Right. Now, I, I, I wanted to switch gears a bit and uh, kind of aim towards what you got going on in the future. You did release a, a second album that was called The Baltimore Housing Project, correct? Yeah, correct, correct. Um, a lot of dope artists on there. Willie the Kid is on there. Terminology, Ransom is on there. Um, another another favorite of mine. You know what I'm saying? And um, dope. Ray Sosa is all over that as well. And um, that did numbers. We're going to be re-releasing that down the line. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, me and the Snow Goons, we got we got some dope shit coming. And um, actually, it's a joint that they uh that they produce. They're producing this whole uh, project for me. And um, the joint that has Nems on there, uh, that's on there. You know Gorilla what I'm saying? And, uh, we, we shot that. Yeah, yeah, me and Nems got a banger, banger on there. You know what I'm saying? Called Fingerprints. That's produced by the Snowborn. So we got a, um, we got an EP coming. You know, um, I got this third installment. We call it the trilogy chapter right now just because you know, we haven't, we haven't settled. We got like six different names that are all dope. And it's yeah. like, I, I know in my heart which one I want, but it's like, it's gonna break a couple of my niggas' hearts when I say, yeah, yeah, yeah it's not gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be that, it's just not gonna be that. But um, right now we call it the trilogy chapter, which is just as dope, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just promoting the trilogy chapter. You know what I'm saying? It's like nobody, nobody saying shit like that. So it's like, I, I really like that. Um, I like the theme of it. I like the, you know, you know, the, the whole, it's a conceptual album, you know, and um, Quiet is Cat, like, I don't know if niggas even understand. All my albums are conceptual albums. They're like graphic novels, if you ask me, you know what I'm saying? Because, right. um, you know, we take, we take what's going on, we take the climate and the temperature that's in the streets, and we really try to build on, you know, a lot of different aspects of it. Like, you got the, the stoop and then you got the uh, the Baltimore housing project which is just a playoff word and the whole project is about project mentality right. you know because every every rapper thinks it's cool to represent the projects but it's some people that think it's cool to get out of the project Definitely. it's um it's people that really live in the project that don't want to be in the projects and That's then for you sure. got you know you got you got older you got older folks who have been in the projects that long that they don't want to leave the project. Yeah. You know, but then you know you go into their you go into their their homes, and and nothing inside of their home is project at all. You know, and you got you know you got that guy that you know he wants to he knows that he's going to die repping his project, and then you got a guy like Jay Z who wants to buy the project. Right. So, you know, the pro the Baltimore Housing Project, you know, is a play of the project mentality. And the more you listen to it, you know, you you'll find yourself, you know, seeing the guys that we're talking about on some shit like, yo, that that shit ain't hard. And you gotta you gotta bust your gun to be hard, you know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't listening to it if it ain't hard. Then you got the rapper that's just like, you know, you know, if if you know, if I change up on my project 
you know, then, then my people won't accept me no more. Right. You know, and these are all project mentalities that aren't spoken on because the only project mentality that rappers respect is the guy that repping his projects. And it's not, you know, when when you're from when you're from a piss poor city or a fucked up city that's being talked about and slandered by your own president. Right. It's like, damn, yo, we got to get out of this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, something's got to change. Nigga, you can change this shit. And here you are shitting on the conditions in the way we live. You can change some of this shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, the mentality of the project, quote unquote, the project nigga, you know what I'm saying? That's what rappers glorify a lot. And it's just like, yeah, man, you can tell you can tell that a lot of rappers that glorify that shit don't come from it. Right. It's because of the fact and the way that they glorify it. So we wanted to, you know, shine light. I, I, I always looked up to Nas and how he could take a word like nigga and, and do so much beautiful shit around it. You know, you know that, uh, you know, Shabazz the Disciple once said in an interview, he said the difference between him and, and other rappers when it comes to, uh, street life and, and, and project shit is they glorify it and he horrifies it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because when, when you, when you from it, 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 it becomes a roadblock to a lot of, you know, a lot of successful endeavors because it's like, the part that they don't tell you about is, you know, when they do your background and they, you know, they really delve into who you are in order to do business, it becomes a setback sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's like something that you have no control over controls everything that you're trying to do. And, and you know, it's, it's just, just, just running this running in this crazy rat race of rap and it's just like yo just to see the a lot of the entities and a lot of the gimmicks that they're trying to sell and it's just like you know i don't i don't pass judgment because i mean by all means do you you know right. what i mean by all means and I, i'm i'm a big fan of <laughs> if my trap is booming i don't give a fuck what y'all selling over there Right. And you know, as long as you know what I'm saying, it's like Dane Dash and 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 you know, and Ace Boogie. He's like, nigga, you ain't the only one getting money. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's other niggas out here that's eating. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'll never, I'll never slit a man's throat on what the fuck he's trying to promote or push. But some of this shit, you you sit and just like, man, these niggas is clowns, man. Like yeah. this shit is, this shit you feeding them me is weirdo shit. And you know, it, it, you know, you got you got your half of, you got your half that you know they understand, you know, gear and, and, and shit like that. And then there's another half that's just like it's a uniform, bro. Or right. some shit like, you know? And and a lot of niggas that have been through I work, man. I got a I got a job, you know? Yeah. And my job has has been the label. It has been the label and independent shit. And this niggas out here that really had this mentality that that you know they think it's like yo I'm that nice that I don't have to work. <laughs> there you go, I, I'm that nice. And based off of me being this fucking nice, somebody's gonna hear me rhyme and fall to their knees. Right. And they're just going to write that check. And it's like nah, bro, you got this shit all the way fucked up, bro. They don't want to invest in themselves. Uh, yo, know, at one point in time, it was, you know, it was looked at, you know, you, you got looked at. People looked at you bad if you paid for a verse. Right. You know, thinking like, thinking like, ah, the nigga, ah, ah, the nigga, you know, the nigga charged you for that verse. Like you got took or something. No, it's, I'm building, no, I'm investing like in myself. <laughs> and it's like, bro, this whole shit. This shit is indie. Everybody's indie now. And it's like, everybody wants this bag. Everybody's chasing the bag. And niggas just like, nah, bro, I know my words. I'm not pulling up and I'm not doing this. I'm not, and it's like, oh, then what the fuck are you going to do, bro? What are you going to do if you, if you can't pull up 
unless it's a bag involved. You got to create that bag. You got to create your worth. And right. your net worth, your net worth is your net worth. Niggas don't, niggas have no personalities. They scared to shake a hand. They scared to tell another nigga that he's doing good. Right. They scared to tell another nigga that he's nice. They scared to tell another nigga that he killed that. And, that, and now you're alone, bro. You're alone and you're a whole plane. You know, you, your personality just dug his grave. And that's like God laying on. You know? And it's, it's, it's weird old shit. But that's enough. I ain't going <laughs> for that type of You dropping it on them, though. They got they got to hear it. I'll, I'll be glad when, when we drop this, man. It's it, it's all valuable. Yeah, bro, it's, it's jewelry. And, I, and I, had to, I had to learn these things from real OGs. Like, niggas that's really putting in a pain. Right. And it's like, yo, I learned, I learned shit the hard way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, I never, you know, I'm I'm from a like yo. I can't I can't reiterate it enough. I'm from a city where being that guy is dangerous, bro. It's dangerous. Yeah. To be that guy. Because then you got a target on you. There you go. So think of Carlito. Think of Carlito, bro. Think of Carlito and him saying, "I know what comes with this." But I'm going to outsmart this shit and get me and my family out. And you see you see what happens. Right. And it's like, as an artist in a city, I'm not sitting here saying I'm that guy. But they're, they're becoming that person or that entity, it's like, I know what I'm up against. Right. And still, and still, you know what I'm saying? Have you... Have you ever seen the movie Point Break? Yeah, back in the day I did, way back. All right, so at the end of, at the end of that movie, you know what I'm saying, he takes the cuffs off Bodie, right? Mm -hmm. And Bodie is swimming because he wants to catch this last wave, bro. Mm -hmm. He's like, my nigga, you can lock me up, but you've been with me this long that you know what I, what I live for. And I live to catch that big wave. Right. Bodie, Bodie knew he was going to die swimming to that big wave but he kept swimming because this was this was it it seemed like this nigga locks me up and i do this i do this time or i'm gonna die doing what it is i love to do and wow. i feel like i'm Bodie swimming toward that wave or whatever comes with it it's like i'm prepared for it you know malcolm x knew no doubt he, he knew he knew what he was up against and he knew what he was walking to walking into but his passion and what he was put here for was bigger than that. Right. Bigger than him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, I might not be you. Yo, this shit might be over for me tomorrow. You know? But then it just might not. And I'm swimming toward that wave. And I just might catch it. And I just might ride that motherfucker out, bro. You no never doubt. know. But I ain't gonna stop swimming. I ain't gonna stop swimming. Well, speaking of swimming to that wave, you've got a, a a new group, a new collective you've become a part of to add on to Let's your talk uh, about it. your Let's portfolio. Talk about it. <laughs> so my yo, salute my nigga, yo, salute my brothers, bro, Mickey Diamond, yeah. Substance, uh, yo, Coach, all the niggas, man. So um, Quiet is kept. Me and Pro Dillinger were friends prior to any of this shit. Yeah. And based off of single here, a rap song there, and nigga, we would talk. And he's like, yo, nah, son, I like the way, you know, I like what you're doing. And I'm like, nah, bro, I like what you're doing. And, you know, the conversations just grew into, you know, real nigga problems. We, we be on the phone and not talk about music for real. Right. So when the opportunity presented itself, you know, the nigga called me one time and he was like, um, he was like, yo, I absolutely love what you're doing. And we want to, we want to see if you want to join our squad. And, you know, I was, I was a part of a squad that, you know, kind of was distancing themselves from each other. And, you know, I felt like, bro, I just want to be connected to something that, you know, that's, that's pushing 
toward the betterment of of this hip hop shit. So I say, yo, right. indeed, man. I was, you know, these niggas was from everywhere. Everybody's from everywhere. And um, like, yeah, yo, be a part of this thing. And you know, I thought I was like, yo, give me forty eight hours, cause you know I love you. You know what I'm saying? I love you, but you know, I knew I know what comes with being in a squad. You know, right, right. So um. I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck with these niggas. I'm gonna just keep my head down, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna prove my worth because yeah. niggas saw me as J Royale, and I'm like, nah, nah, bro, it's different because now, you know, now, now that I'm a part of something, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, it's no egos. Right. That's what I love about them niggas. It's no egos. You know what I'm saying? It's pure. Yo, we we working. We creating a buzz and we want to be impactful. No doubt. And um, and I swear, man, the fuck since since I've been fucking with them, you know, it's just been a whole. It's it's, it's like a breath of fresh air of new rhyme styles, new way of thinking, um, new perspectives. You know, um, where niggas is from, they they see things different, but you know, they see the same streets just from a different, you know, just bird's eye view or whatever. So, you know, the building is different. And then, you know, when we when we got together, we did the Top Shelf Premium show. Um, that was actually our second show that I'm lying. Because, you know, the first show was um, in Chelsea Music Hall. And, you know, it was kind of like um, we all got on stage. We It was the umbrella show, but everybody was a separate entity getting on stage. So, you got to see, it was like the the... the it was like the danger room for the X-Men. Right. You know, niggas got in there and they, they started going to, you know, showcasing their skill. They pulling their superpowers out and shit. They strengths. It was like, oh shit, this shit is crazy. So then we got invited to the Top Shelf Premium Show. And that's, you know, we we knew where everybody's strengths was. So we got up that bitch and just rumble shit, man. For real, it was, it, 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 it was super duper fire. Dope. And, you know, I'm glad I'm glad that I'm, I moved with them niggas. But, you know, shout out to Pro Dylan, that, that nigga, Snotty, you know. Them niggas reached out to me early, early, early on. And, and Mickey Dunn is there, too. But I'll, I'll why is <laughs> you know, you know, me and Vicky got the funniest story. How, how I, you know, right. how our situation came about. That's my brother. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, moving around with them and just, you know, their, their different personalities. Um, It's been grand working with some solid niggas, man. And I fuck with them niggas. And um, not to mention that, you know, I got two niggas that I always, I always move around with. That's God Branch and Rad for Almighty. You know, um, right. and they my brothers too. So you know what I'm saying. If, if you see me pull up to a venue, or you see me pull up to, you know, anywhere, them niggas is somewhere close, and it's like, uh, you, you know, you might not see them, but we definitely see you. You know what I'm saying? That's how that's how we play that. Right. So the umbrella so, is uh is Josiah the Gift, Pro Dillinger, Allah, Prem, Snotty, Mickey Diamond, What a Mess, and yourself, or are there some more members? Did I cover everybody? Uh, yeah, Pro Dillinger, I think, I don't know if you said him. Yeah, yeah. Pro Dillinger, and, um, it's, it's, it's a, um, it's a who's who with some producers as well, you know right. what I'm saying? But, you know, I don't, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, 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 for the most part, yeah, they them niggas, they them niggas. That's yeah. what's up, that's what's the up. umbrella, and they, and a, and a solid, and a solid few niggas that they are, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo... We went up that bitch. We stopped the whole shit to pick up my nigga Snotty. Snotty was, you know, he was, you know, he was on vacation right. at the time, if you will. You know what I'm saying? So, right. the fuck, once we did that, you know, he back home and he, he, he doing what he got to do. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with them niggas even if I'm by myself, man. I'm repping that, I'm repping that shit. Yeah, fuck with up. them niggas, man. And I love the fact that they fuck with me. No doubt. Now I wanted I wanted to see if you had any final words for this interview for the hip hop nation out there. Any final statement about maybe up and coming artists or or just people in general observing hip hop from the outside looking in? Uh well um for the up and coming artists, I say, bro, you are artists. You know, you're an artist and um 
Uh, I say with social media and these platforms, you know, everybody's a channel. Everybody is their own channel in in, in this world of cable TV. Yep. Make your channel a channel that they want to turn into. No you doubt. know, you stick to your guns, you stay true to yourself, and and don't ride a wave. You stand on what you do best, and that way when it's your time... When it's your time, you embrace that shit. You catch that wave. It's like that surf. It's like that surfboard analogy. You know what I'm saying? When right. your wave come, yeah. it's up to you to catch it or wipe the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just like you can't blame anybody because, you know, um, whoever you need, all of your resources are there. You use you them. Know, and don't be a fucking dickhead. Learn how to shake hands. Right. Humble yourself, know who to charge, and know who to do favors for, because there will come a time, you know what I mean, and um, build these relationships, and those relationships turn into great resources, and don't fuck nobody over, man. No doubt, and that comes to my my final question, which is, how can the fans or listeners get in contact with you on social media, or you know, other artists if they want to get a guest feature from you or something like that. I'm, I'm really active. I'm really active on the Instagram because um, not only am I, you know, sharing a lot of content, but you can also reach me directly for features and business inquiries, merch. I run a band camp page where I sell T-shirts and, um, and, 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 and vinyls and cassette tapes and I do drops on, you know. So IG, J. Royale, YouTube, J. Royale. And this is all one word, J-A-Y-R-O-Y-A-L-E, you know, Facebook, J. Royale. And, um, yeah, man, just J. Royale across the board, you know what I'm saying? And, um, the fuck, if it ain't, if it ain't a, a, a heavy set nigga with crunch, you got the wrong guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man, look, check me out and, um, I, like, cause I, I have so many features out there that, you know, it's just like I, I knew I, I understood the assignment, and I just sat down and got to work for like three years straight. Oh yeah. You know, and um, you know, I feel like an album is an album, but what you do in between those albums, you can always bring new supporters and you know new looks back to that album. Do you want to know the first time I heard your voice on a on a record? Yeah. It was a joint with uh, Planet Asia and Milano. Oh my God! That, yo, actually, and, and check this out. It's crazy because that's the joint that I'll be performing live right now. Don't become a victim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. That's that joint. That's that joint. <laughs> Produced by Body Bag Gang. Man. Yeah, and yeah. Killed that shit. They they told me they wanted to do a video for that shit. I was so honored, bro. I pulled up on my Baltimore shit and. Yeah, bro, yeah. it's just like, yo, Planet Asia, Milano Constantine is my brother. We shot a video. That's um, Big Pun's bloodline right there. DITC. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, yo, we standing with bro. Yeah. And he's telling us, he's telling us the, 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 the boot camp that they took you through coming up with them. Nah, nigga, come on, yo, kick something to that right now. What you got? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just the shit that he had to go through as a up and coming artist. And how he, oh my, yo, salute the, yo, Milano Constantine. This nigga, like, yo, real quick story before we, you know. Yeah, yeah. We shooting, we shooting a video for the joint called Uwap. So we in Queens. So the videographer is, you know, he's from New York. Everybody's from New York. Da 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 da. So he like, yo, come on, yo, let's, let's take it to the bridge. It's like one in the morning. So the videographer is like, in the Queens Bridge? <laughs> he like, I'm not, I'm not going to Queens Bridge at one in the morning. And Milano Constantine got this thing tough. He put his hand on his shoulders, like, like you know what I mean? Like yeah. the OG that he is. He's like, nah, beloved, we moving, we moving in love. God got us. Nigga, we went to Queens Bridge, got mad dope for the yo. The whole video is one of my favorite videos because that was the first time of him and Edo linking up. Um, yo, and just Milano, the in betweens, and him telling us 
everything that you know. Oh my God, man! And we we telling the video one of the Milan was talking. I'm like, nigga, you get this? He like, no, nah, no, nah, what's going on? Like, yo, we right beat him up just because. Some legendary shit. Right, and, he, and he's not getting this footage, bro. And it's like, yo, this shit is crazy. But yo, that man just powering with G Rat, talking to G Rat. It's it's been a roller coaster ride, man. And I'm I'm still I'm still excited, like butterflies excited about just the next endeavor. So you know, it's still fun to me. It's not about the money. It's not about you know egos or any of that i'm still having a, a very good time and um uh, i can't wait to um present the new the new work into the world man just to see what the people have to say yeah and the, and the fans of that real classic hip-hop are definitely anxious to hear what you got to offer yeah man and it's like there's no yes man in my cat so everything is coming together that's what's up man nah yo I want niggas to kill me on tracks, and they have been. <laughs> Shit is getting real. We in a whole different field of features and hip hop. So it's like it's different. We playing with the big dogs on this joint. Definitely so, that G Rap joint. That's that's, that's definitely. Yeah. I told you that's my that's my goat right there. G Rap. Yeah, yeah, mine too, <laughs> nigga. I was like, yo, just just talking to yo, and yo, it's just oh man, like. Damn, yo, so many jewels he dropped about. I just heard that right before I before I called you. That song, wow. that's the first time I heard it. I wasn't aware of it. And I was like, whoa. Wow. And uh, he said, uh, jewelry all on the tour, so call it a treasure chest. Call it a treasure <laughs> chest. I said, oh my God, yo, this nigga is killing me right now. I said, this nigga G rap is, he still got it. He still got it, he never, he never lost it. Down the next tour. And, and, and like seeing it like, it's weird because seeing the list. <laughs> right, right. Seeing seeing the cool G rap list yeah. in your face is kind of like, you know, it's, 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 it's surreal. It's one of those, it's, it's, it's surreal, bro. <laughs> like it's something that you never think you would see in real life. It, hey listeners listeners if you know you know because you have to be a fan you have to be of the culture and a fan of these type of people to in order know, to understand yes. and 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 hearing his bars come off the bars are secondary to the cool g rap lisp as <laughs> if you ask me because the way that he maneuvers this lisp around so so surgical bars yeah man it's it's, it's, it's just brilliant and and to see yo getting his shit off with ease and you know he you know we all know he's a super og yeah he transcended he transcended time man like his yeah man his he's dope today and he was dope yep. when he was young like he was he was cutting edge when right. he was young all the way till today he's still dope you know that's a fact and man. very few have done that i think maybe maybe like tragedy Gaddafi, maybe you could say buster rhymes people like that but have right. made that have made that transition but to me that's why that's why i vote for him as you know to go shout out shout out to tragedy Gaddafi. we got some hidden dots we got oh, some hidden yeah. dots about the fly outside as well you know what i'm saying man right, man we got man a lot of queens artists you know that lyrical queen shit you know the you juice know, crew. Juice crew overall transcended pretty well. Like Master yeah, Ace is yeah. still dope. Craig G still yeah. dope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All the uh, Kane no, still still putting it together like no other. Yeah, yeah. Right, man, working with these guys has just been it's just been a dream come true for me. And um, like I say, bro, I'm just I'm excited about the next move. It's, it you know still brings out the kid in me. And um, I did a uh, I did a top show premium freestyle, and, and my son was with me, so you know it's like the the, the universe works in a weird way, and it's just like right. you know what I'm saying. It's been it's been fun, man. So yeah, yeah. It's been great talking to you, brother. I really appreciate this conversation. I learned I learned a lot myself about you, and uh, and maybe we'll have you back again. I'd like to have you back again when you drop a new project or or a new single. I'm on the other side of this phone, King. We can make anything happen, man. It was a pleasure talking to you. And, um, you know, this is the easiest part of, of hip-hop, man. Yeah, yeah. It's the easiest part is, is, is trying to get people to get to know me. Right. You know, the, the man behind the king, 
and behind, you know, whatever it is I do in the studio. So it's like, thank you for allowing me to be transparent so that the people could know, you know, the real J. Royale, you know what I'm saying? And so Yeah, the pleasure's all mine, sir. Everybody give it up. J. Royale. Hey, J. Royale, man. Get at me, bro. I'm outside. Thanks for listening to Coffee Talk. Are you interested in appearing on the podcast? Reach out to me at coffee.talk at gmail.com. Business owners and entrepreneurs are welcome. Sponsorship packages are available to have your product or service featured on Coffee Talk. Once again, that email is coffee.talk at gmail.com. That's K-A-F-I dot talk at gmail.com.